Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Today, let us continue on how to be led by the Holy Spirit, which also is how to hear God's voice. Now, we have two texts. One is in John sixteen thirteen, and it says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. And as we've been saying for the last three weeks, this is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. God gave us the Holy Spirit to guide us and he speaks to us. So this is a promise that the Holy Spirit does speak to us and he tells us what is yet to come. That does not necessarily mean about what's going to happen to the United States, what's going to happen to Israel, what's going to happen to the world or the economy, but it specifically means what's going to happen in your life, the things that you need to know today. In other words, the Holy Spirit will guide you today in all the things that you have to do, in all the decisions you have to make. And that's where the Holy Spirit helps you and guides you. The other scripture we have been reading is in Romans chapter 8, verse 14. It says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And the New Testament was written in Greek and the Greek word translated sons is the Greek word huios, which means a a full grown, fully developed mature or adult son. In other words, in the Greek, there are different words for son. There can be baby, toddler, a child that is growing and learning, a youth, and then another word for adult. This word here in this scripture is the word for adult. So this shows us that one of the characteristics of being a um, one of the adult sons of God or being spiritually mature is being able to be led by the Holy Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit. And we've been saying this for three weeks. If that's a big, big if, if we always, and that's a big always, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, we will never make a mistake. Why? Because the Holy Spirit guides us in the right path. Remember Psalm 23, 3, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And the word righteousness simply means right, right paths, right ways. So what does that mean? That means that the Holy Spirit will lead you to avoid all the traps, all the things that would make you stumble, the things that would cause hurt or accident or injury or harm. He will guide you through life so that you always make the right choice and right decision. So how do we do that? We started by giving steps to how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And the first step is believe. Believe that God does speak to you because there are people who say, well, God just never speaks to me. Stop saying that. Stop it. He does speak to you. And we just read in John 16, 13, he will speak what he hears. So whatever the Holy Spirit hears from the Father about you that you need to know, he speaks. He does speak what he hears. So the problem is not that God is not speaking. The problem is we are not hearing. So Number one, believe he does speak to you. So you have to stop saying God just never speaks to me. And you need to start saying God is always speaking to me. God is always directing me. God counsels me. He teaches me the way I should go. There's your faith in action. Faith at work. 
everything we receive from God, how do we receive it? We receive it by faith. So that means also hearing his voice, knowing his voice is also by faith. And so you activate your faith saying he does speak to me. And so believe two things, believe he does speak. And secondly, believe that you can hear him. You can. And so you say God is speaking and I can hear him. I am led by his spirit. And we spent time in John Chapter 10, verses 2 through 4. And if you missed any of the last three weeks broadcasts, especially on this series, I encourage you go to my website, www.victoriousfaith. That's V I C T O R I O U S Faith, F A I T H dot C O. That's C O like Colorado. And go to my website, go to the radio broadcast archives page, and you will be able to listen to all the radio broadcasts online. They're available 24 hours a day. So if you missed any of them, go back and listen to them, listen to them again and again and study them and take notes. And so anyway, we have been studying this for three weeks And so I'm just trying to give a review this morning and go forward. But in John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And in verse four, he said, when he is brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. So you have to believe that you know his voice. So use your faith, use your faith, believe God is speaking to me. And number two, I believe I can hear him. I know his voice. Hallelujah. Then the second step is understand how God can speak to you. How does God speak to you? Number one, we said, what don't do. A lot of people are putting out tests. Lord, if this is your will, make this happen. Make this happen. Make the light turn green. Um, let me get green lights for the next three signals. Um, let four red trucks pass by me or make so-and-so call me if this is your will. These are called um, what? The church is traditionally called fleeces, copying Gideon in Judges chapter six, where Gideon laid out the lamb's fleece and said, Lord, if the fleece is wet and the ground is dry, then I will know that this is your will. Then the next day he said, but if the fleece is dry and the ground is wet, then I'll know it's your will. Don't do that. You see, it was okay for Gideon because he was not born again. He did not have the Holy Spirit living in him. He was not a new creation in Christ. So he could only be led by outward circumstances. But that is very dangerous. Don't do that because outward circumstances can be manipulated. They can be manipulated by the devil. They could be manipulated by other people and other people are not always led by the Holy Spirit. And I could go into experiences where I was following somebody else's directions, just trusting they were led by the spirit, but they weren't, they weren't led. And so it ended up getting me in a difficult position. And so don't be led by outward circumstances or by tests or by, um, you know, four red trucks driving by or that kind of thing. Anyway, let's go on and don't put out fleeces or make tests. How does God speak to us? Number one, he speaks to us by the written word. And these are not necessarily in an order priority. However, the written word is one of the very major ways God will speak to you. He will speak to you every day. The word of God is available to you 24 seven. When you open your Bible and you start to read, God can speak to you. God can give you wisdom and answers and directions that you need at that very, very moment. He can be so up to date, even in the written word. Hallelujah. Number two, God can speak to you 
through sermons. That is through the preached word. And let me clarify, that's when the preacher is led by the Spirit. Of course, we know there are many times when a preacher is not led by the Spirit, when he preaches out of his own understanding or when he preaches, sadly to say, out of an encyclopedia or out of a history book. Those things might not be led by the Spirit. But if If the big if he is speaking by inspiration from the Holy Spirit, then it is God speaking by the Holy Spirit through the preacher. So you can judge. And as all of these things, it is so important for you to judge them by the Holy Spirit living inside of you. But God can speak to you through preached word. God's word is truth. Hallelujah. But. When people preach the word, a lot of times they mix their own opinions in with their teaching or they mix their experience in with their teaching. And there are a lot of preachers who preach experience more than they preach scripture. They say, well, this is how it happened to me. This is what happened in my life. This is what I believe. Well, we're not interested in your experiences so much as we want to know what does the Bible say? So there again, always judge everything you, you hear people say by the written word. It has to agree with the written word. And it has to agree with the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Your spirit has the Holy Spirit living in you when you are born again. Now, if you're not born again, you need to be. And you just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I give you my life today. I surrender myself to you, Lord God. Be my God. And I will serve you all the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And with that prayer, you can be born again. You can become a child of God. And if you just prayed that, I want you to write to me and tell me that you prayed that. And I'll give you a booklet about salvation and help you to start your new life with Jesus. However, if you are born again, you do have the Holy Spirit living in you and the Holy Spirit living in you will always confirm what um, is the truth. So when you hear things, judge them by the written word and judge them by the Holy Spirit living in you. And then number three, how does God speak to you? He can speak to you through other people. And as we said, Many times he speaks to you through your husband or wife, your mother or father, your friends or someone close to you. And it's true. We don't always like to hear it from them. There are times when there's a word spoken and it's like, well, we just rather than not that they are not the ones that tell us, but we need to be humble enough to listen if God is speaking to us through them to receive it and recognize it. And there again, you judge what other people say by the written word of God and by the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Never, never, never take other people's word without the witness of the written word and the witness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because other people can be wrong too. And then number four, God can speak to you through prophecies. And that is when a person speaks through by the gift of prophecy, as mentioned in first Corinthians chapter 12, the, and, um, chapter 14, the gift of prophecy. And so that one, let me also mention number five, dreams and visions. God can speak to you by dreams and visions. Now, most people don't get dreams and visions. Now, some do. Some people are even especially gifted to get more dreams and visions than others. But most people do not get a lot of dreams and visions. And then number six, God can speak to you through angels. And of course, we know many stories in the Bible where an angel came and spoke to people. The angel came to Daniel. The angel came to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. The angel came to Mary and Joseph. The angel came to Peter. And so we see the angels speaking messages from God. However, as in all cases, and especially in these areas of other people, prophecies, dreams, visions, and angels, always, 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 you got it? Always judge it. Judge these words, judge every dream, judge every vision, judge every prophecy. Even if an angel comes, judge it with what the written word, the Bible 
and by the Holy Spirit living in you. And as um, Paul said to the Galatians, even if I or an angel from heaven would come and preach to you a different gospel other than what we have already preached, let him be eternally condemned. So you see, even false religions and what we would call cults ha- have started around the world. How? Through the appearance of an angel, a vision of of an angel. Now those cults of uh, visions of angels, I mean, were not God's angels. They were demonic spirits. As the Bible says that even Satan can manifest as an angel of light. So always judge them by the written word and by the Holy spirit living in you. And then number seven, God can speak to you, lead you, guide you by God arranged circumstances. And that's where God just lines everything up in your path. And it's boom, 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 boom. It's just like he practically carries you along into a certain um, thing because he has so lined it up and arranged it for you. And it's just obvious. It's wide open there in front of you. And then number eight, God can speak to you through your conscience. Now, what is your conscience? Your conscience is actually part of your spirit. One, uh, some teachers, I mean, say it's the voice of your spirit, but I think it's even more than that. But um, your conscience judges right and wrong. Your conscience knows this is right or this is wrong. I should do that or I should not do that. And especially when it comes to sin, your, your conscience will tell you don't do it. Or if it comes to something right, you should forgive. Your conscience is telling you, you need to forgive them. You need to forgive them. So your conscience can tell you what is right and what is wrong. And then number nine, God can speak to you by an audible voice. And that's the voice of God speaking to you out loud, audibly, so that your physical ears hear his voice, your physical ear, your physical eardrums hear the voice of God. Now, when I'm in uh, meetings and services and I ask people, how many here have heard the audible voice of God? I often have one or two people in the whole congregation that have heard the audible voice of God. So that is occasional, but still, you know, if you have a group of 50 people and one or two have heard the audible voice of God, then that shows us that most people have not. And so it does happen, but it is not all that common. And then number 10, how does God speak to us. He speaks to us by the still small voice. And this is what we read about in first Kings chapter 19, first Kings 19. And the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain. Now he's speaking to Elijah. First Kings nineteen eleven, speaking to Elijah, God said, go out and stand on the mountain In the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a still small voice. Another translation, a gentle whisper. And so God can speak to you in a small voice. Now, this is the voice of the Holy Spirit inside of you, inside your spirit. And he speaks clear, distinct words. Now, let me go on and mention the next one because I want to compare the two. The next way God speaks to us and this one, this one, listen up. This one is number one next to the word of God, the written word. This is number one. This is how the Holy Spirit speaks to you. It is by the 
inward witness, the inward witness. Now, in this, we must understand, first of all, you are a spirit. Now, the world does not recognize us as spirit beings. The world will say body and soul, body and soul. You know, we're just body and soul. You are not just body and soul. You are spirit, soul, and body. Not just body and soul, but spirit, soul, and body. As God is three in one, three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we are created in the image of God. Genesis one twenty six. God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We are three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And so the spirit and soul, sometimes Christians get mixed up and think they are the same. They cannot be the same because Hebrews 4.12 says That's Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing between joints and marrow, and dividing between soul and spirit. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing soul and spirit. So how can the soul and spirit be one and the same if they can be divided? They are not. So what is your spirit? Your spirit is the real you, the life of you on the inside. And we've studied this before in the Hebrew and in the Greek. The word spirit is the same word as the word breath. So it is your breath and your spirit, the same one on the inside. The real you on the inside is spirit. And even as Jesus said to the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter four, he said, the father Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth because God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is spirit. You are spirit. That's what you are. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. So your body is just the house that houses your spirit and soul. What is your soul? Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Mind, thinking part. Will, deciding and choosing part. Emotions, the feeling part. Let me say it again. Mind, your thinking part. Will, choosing, deciding part. Emotions, your feeling part. Mind, will, and emotions together are the soul. And so your soul is in your head and um, your spirit is in you. that. The Bible often refers to the belly, the belly or the heart. The heart of man is also your spirit, your spirit, because it's like the heart of the tree. It's like the heart of a watermelon. It's the most inner part of you. And that's where your spirit is that's where your spirit lives and as james wrote in um the end of james chapter two the last verse of chapter two he said that the as the body without the spirit is dead so your spirit is the life force of your body so your spirit is on the inside of you and the holy spirit lives in your spirit Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit lives in your spirit and then he bears witness with your spirit, not with your head. He bears witness with your spirit, not with your head. Your head reasons. Your head makes, uh, puts facts together in a logical way and you need to gather facts, but you must be led not by facts, but by your spirit. Let me remind you, of Proverbs chapter three, Proverbs three, verse five, three, five, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now, when the Bible talks about heart, it's referring to your spirit, your inner man, 
your spirit man. So let's just say that your spirit trust in the Lord with all your spirit, with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. So it says, trust in the Lord with your heart, or we could say be led by your spirit, not by your own understanding. Why? Because we don't know all the facts, even though you might collect 1000 facts and you make a spreadsheet of calculations to the nth degree. You know what? You can still be wrong. You can still be wrong. You can say, I've got this so calculated out. I know this is the way to go. You can still be wrong. For one thing, you don't know the future. And all these facts can change tomorrow. They could change tomorrow. The economy goes up and down. People change. Situations change. Facts change. Everything could change even tomorrow. And because you don't know the future, that's why you cannot just rely on facts and your brilliant mind and your ability to calculate things to the nth degree. I know people like that. They calculate, calculate, calculate. They make a spreadsheet for this, for that. And you know what? You're just trusting on your own mind. You need to learn. Okay. Gather the facts, get information. It helps you. It really does. But in the end, the final decision, go with your spirit, follow your spirit, the inner man on the inside of you. Glory to God. Well, we're out of time. So join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.